Hello, this is a short demonstration uh, about NoiseMap and show you some of the features of the software. So we supply a demonstration program called um, Manual Example Database and uh, we'll start off by double clicking on that which automatically starts NoiseMap. The dongle is red and then the splash screen comes up to tell you the version that you're using um, and that you've connected successfully to the database. Having done that, we can look at what's in this database by going to File and Database Preview. And we see that there are two scenarios in this database. We've got the base scenario and one with the new road we click on the base scenario we see that the tiles which contain objects the map if you like for the base scenario has been highlighted with the, the purple tiles and let's load that and once we've loaded it we can see that it's got road segments it's got buildings, contour lines, there's a railway lines, several railway lines here. And here we have an access road into a factory and some areas where the factory machinery um, and plant will be working. So we've got road, rail and open site activities all taking place in this one model. Now each one of these objects has got properties and there's several different ways of looking at the properties. The easiest is perhaps viewers colour. View, viewers colour and we'll switch that on. And the default property is to show the height of all objects and if I click update view you can see the heights are shown there and they're shown with um, red is the highest part 102 there's two red objects and blue is the lowest part this contour here is in a valley and this road here is also in a dip but if we select a particular object then we can look at more than just the height. For example if we select road segments we are offered the category. If we update that then for the base scenario everything is in the existing roads category. But how about we load a new scenario? So let's close the viewers colour and go back to the database preview and that's file database preview. If I click on with new road we see that these tiles are highlighted because those are the ones occupied by objects belonging to the new road. The other part of the model still relates to this scenario, the with new road scenario. But if I want to download the whole model, I need to click Inherit Parent Tiles. I can preview where the new road is, and there it's actually been pulled in. And I can load that model. It warns me that I've got the base scenario loaded, but I want to load the new scenario. And now we have the with new road scenario. And that's more interesting because if I want to look at the database previewer but look at viewers color and decide now to look at the road segments and the category you might remember that this was the existing road in the previous model but now we've also got green which is altered road so this is where the existing road which came up here has been altered to al allow a connection to the new road and here there's an alteration and the red is the new road something else you might want to know is the flow rate 
where, what is the traffic flow rate. And here we can see that this section of road, red, has 31,500 vehicles. And this section in the blue has only 5,000, well, 4,880 vehicles. So there's many ways of um, looking at the properties of the model. And a further way would be to look at the precise properties. And if I double click on any one of the objects, then the detailed dialog box opens. And here I can see the road name, the start height and the end height, and the traffic flow, including here the type of flow, it's an 18 hour flow, 50 kilometres an hour, and 8,899 8, vehicles in 18 hours at 3.7 heavy. And various other things such as the category width. And of course if I wanted to change the traffic flow then all I need to do is to click on the drop down and here's a whole range of different traffic flows and I could update that if I needed to. But I'll press escape um, because I don't want to change that. And there's many other things you can change from drop downs well, but we won't uh, go into those right now. Instead let's click on another object. Let's click on this piece of road here. Now you will see that the dialog box has changed. It's now route segments because this is a whole route. It does carry vehicles but no longer are we talking about a general traffic flow. These are specific vehicles, delivery lorries going at 50 kilometers an hour and there are six of those every hour. And there's also machinery involved in handling materials going into and out of the factory buildings. Um, they travel more slowly, 15 kilometers an hour, and there's 20 of them moving every hour. If we looked at um, a different building, at a building for example, we might want to look at this building here, then what we've got is its height. The top of the building is 93.3 meters above the datum. And what about the railway line? Well here we've got the name of the railway line and all the different rail vehicle services using this piece of railway line. And we can even click on a drop down and there we've got the type of train that's using it. So the model contains a huge amount of information and I hope that if you've got this example model you'll now some, spend some time exploring it. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.